This week at the cafe, investing online. Meet Jill McKinney, an editor with the Silicon Investor. It's considered the world's biggest online financial bulletin board. Ready to buy direct? This is E-Trade, the pioneer in online stock transactions. Corey Johnson is West Coast Bureau Chief for TheStreet.com, an online zine for cyber investors. And meet Julie O'Brien. She'll tell us how Microsoft Money has new online links that let you manage your money on the web. Investing online, coming up next. The Net Cafe is made possible in part by TechWeb for up to the minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. We're talking about investing online, which I personally find very scary because <laughs> it is just too easy to do. Have you done that? Would you do that? Actually, I haven't. My girlfriend uh, yeah. has an investment club. She does that kind of investing online. On, online. She trades. And spend. She trades between online and the phone, but she she likes the online. So. Made any money? No, <laughs> especially not recently. Not recently. <laughs> Me, um, you know, I liken it to gambling. It seems like kind of the same uh, yeah, thing. Yeah. And uh, when you're gambling with your life savings, <laughs> I think I'm prone to give it to somebody who knows what they're doing. Well, we'll find out a little bit tonight about what the choices are, what the options are, where the good information is, and where the bad information is. So, Corey Johnson, you are the Silicon Valley Bureau Chief of TheStreet.com. I consider you guys kind of an upstart in the online investment journalism world, kind of going head-to-head -head with the Wall Street Journal, and I think probably giving them a run for their money. What do you guys offer that you can't get uh, for investment you know, tips or investment uh, ideas uh, that in, a, in a regular newspaper? I think that uh, these great newspapers like the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, mm -hmm. and the LA Times, they, they tell stories about things happening in the marketplace, but we tell stories about what's happening to stocks. Mm -hmm. We really focus in on what's happening with a stock and not every little interesting thing that a company might be doing. Okay. So our readers get information about what to invest in and what things will affect the stock price. Interesting. So you're really focused more on the whole, the whole investment story. So, so from, a, from a company perspective, say I'm tracking a, a certain industry or a certain company within that industry, are you guys going to give me actual tips and say, here's, here's what you should buy, here's what we think, or how do I use the information you're giving me? Right. There are a lot of places on, uh, on the internet where people will say, I think you should buy this stock or stay away from this stock. Mm -hmm. We don't do that, but we do give investors information. We have reporters that call up fund managers. They call up traders, they interview people, mm. really smart people on Wall Street, and find out what they're doing and why. Okay. And then we present a, a reasoned case mm. based on the information that we, ha that we get from these people that we interview. Okay. Now tell me if I'm wrong, but when you read a lot of analyst reports or things like that, there often may be somewhat of a conflict of interest. Uh, they may have some uh, uh, you know, stake in, in something that's sure. being mentioned. And you guys, I, as a journalist, you, you know, hopefully keep to an, e an oath, an ethic around that. How do you keep from having any kind of double double standards or, or invested interest in what you guys are talking well, about? There, there are two things that we do that are, are, are very unique in all of journalism, not mm -hmm. just on the internet, but all of journalism. The first thing is that none of the financial journalists on, on the street.com are allowed to own any stocks. Mm. I can't own any stocks. No, it's a sad it's, thing. It's a good thing, but it's a sad uh, thing. Lately, it's been a mercy. Uh, uh, you, and you, the you, second you. thing we do is we really identify people and their, their underlying biases. You'll never see an analyst quoted in the street.com without something saying, this analyst owns the shares of this company. Oh, okay. You'll never see a mutual fund manager quote on the street.com talking about a stock without saying this guy who loves his stock happens to own a million shares of it. That's we something I think you down. almost never see in print journalism. Uh, so that's, uh, I think, a great uh, bonus. Well, you know why you never see that? Because journalists have to get someone on the phone. Right. And it's too hard to, for a lot of journalists to find people's underlying biases, exactly. but we consider that our job. So you dig and you find that well, extra, exactly, extra information. Exactly. Okay, now the street has a, an interesting origin. This guy, James Kramer, uh, Kramer. founded it. Uh, he's, he's everywhere. I see him on TV, Good Morning America and the like. Uh, how did he come to fund, you know, fund and create this, uh, this business? Well, Kramer's everywhere. He's, yeah. uh, Martha Stewart is to the home what Jim Kramer is to Wall Street. <laughs> um, but Jim Kramer runs a successful hedge fund on Wall Street and has for some time. So there's no conflict there? Uh, Kramer writes about his holdings. In every, whenever he writes about mm -hmm. the stock, he says, look, I own shares of the stock. I was an idiot to buy it. This is why. <laughs> okay. and so he, he uh, often offers up the mea culpa. Right. But Kramer had this idea that it would be great to have journalists focus on stocks 
and really high quality journalists. So we've hired people from the Wall Street Journal, from Bloomberg, Reuters, Time Inc., all these great journalistic places to get reporters together to cover the stock market. And Kramer had this notion that it could be done on the internet in a time effective way. Okay, now tell me in, in the future, uh, you know, you subscribe to this site, you get information. What else am I going to get here coming up? In the well, our goal is to make money for our readers. Mm -hmm. And we intend to build out our bureaus and build out our reporting staff to give them ideas to invest with. So it sounds like I could actually make back my subscription fee if I read well enough. If it doesn't happen, we're screwing up. Right. For URLs of today's featured websites, just go to the NetCafe site at cnptv.com. And Jill, you are with TechStocks.com, which right. is part of Silicon Investor. Right. And there are so many financial sites out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's hundreds of places you know I can go to find out stuff about where to invest and what's good right. and what's bad. Why should I go to your site? What's different about it? We like to brag about the sophistication of the individual investors that use our site, actually. We feel that they spend a lot more time researching individual stocks and sharing that information with others, as well as the tight community that exists on Silicon Investor. Or now explain that. Why should I care that you have sophisticated users on your site? Because you'll be able to get better information for yourself as an individual investor if you're dealing with people that are as sophisticated, if not more so, than you are. Okay, maybe this is one of these things where you're assuming a lot for people who may not be familiar with your site. The whole point right. in your site, right. well, I guess it's not your site. It's everybody's exactly. site, right? I mean, we share information. So right. what I get is not what you think about a stock, right. but what some other guy, just like myself, thinks about or has had experience, right? How exactly. do you work that sharing of information? Well, our site was founded based on the fact that we believe that individual investors, given the right tools and access to information, can make better investing decisions for themselves. So it's a very user-driven site. Well, how can, you, how can I trust the fact that people on your site are giving me good information? I mean, sometimes you're motivated to get bad information, right? Because it's what bad for you may be good for me as an sure, investor. Sure, everyone has their own agenda, but we also feel that people on our site spend enough time research, researching specific stocks mm -hmm. so that they're able to know who's telling the truth and who's not. You learn within any community to know who to trust and not to after a certain period of time and after certain interactions with these same individuals. Yeah. All right, I guess you say, in fact, you are the largest financial discussion group exactly. on the web. Right. So I guess if one guy says something stupid, 20 guys are going to jump on him exactly. and say, that's not true. Exactly. That's my safety right. net, kind of the real world right. out there. And that's the value of our site. All right, now you focus mainly on technology and biotech stocks, is that right? The focus of our site generally is, yes, on biotech and technology stocks. However, over the past three years, the site certainly has grown into uh, the inclusion of other sectors. Do you have any information from the people who use your site, or do you have your own philosophy that says this is really better information in a way? I mean, bottom line, investing is about making money, right? right. Nothing right. else. And right. therefore, the best information <laughs> better lead to the most bucks. Right. Uh, is there reason to believe that I will do better as an investor because of the way I get information from tech stocks as opposed to some other Well, stores? we definitely feel that individual investors are more empowered by having access to information that not necessarily isn't, you know, objective or subjective, right. but at least they're able to make or draw those conclusions for themselves as opposed to being told or force-fed specific sure. information. Now, can I actually trade online on your site or you no, just send me off not. somewhere else? Exactly. We have we do have a broker zone where we sort of go through the different online investors and we have discussion forums on our site that discuss the pros and cons of okay, each Okay, so each I can get some, some other guys opinion what was it exactly. like working with X exactly. online and et cetera, et cetera. Right. Well, that's that's pretty useful too. Right. Now, I know you asked me to become a member when I go to your site, mm -hmm. but I was able to sort of cruise around without becoming a member. What do Absolutely. I get if I am a member? You are a member. Your greatest, um, well, probably the, the only thing that most people would want to do with a membership is post messages. You can also access oh, certain be a member features. To, to post right. your own messages. You can okay. access certain other features like private messaging okay. and personal profiles and portfolios. But actually, posting messages is the most valuable thing that you'll get out of sure. becoming a full member. And finally, how do you organize this? I mean, there's so, even though you're limited to tech stocks, there's so much information out there. If I was interested in a certain area, right. how do I navigate through your site? The easiest way is to go right to the home page and use the search engine. Okay, so I can just right. search for by, a, by a stock or, or a category By or ticker whatever. or company name, you can also yeah. search for specific information within an individual thread. For example, if you wanted to find one, sp you know, one specific name within the Dell thread, okay. you can search individually. Great. All right, it's techstocks.com. Right. It's a very good site. Thank, Thank you. you, Jill. Thank you. For URLs of today's featured websites, just go to the NetCafe site at cmptv.com. So, Rebecca, when you're talking about online investing, certainly E-Trade is known as probably the, the, the longest standing online investment house uh, that there is. Now, 
one of the big questions that I have, I'm not an investor, I've never traded stocks before online or even using a broker. How do I go about trading a stock online? Right. Well, it's very easy. The first thing you do is you open an account. It's like a brokerage account, so you send $1,000 in to open your account or more. And then you're assigned a, an ID and a password. So then from then on, you just go to the site, log in with your ID and password, and you can use all of the resources and can trade. Now, I, I can give you my payment electronically, or do I have to mail you a check? or I mean You can mail us a check, or you can actually transfer money in over the Internet from your bank account. So you have an electronic way to do it as well. So my next step is I want to figure out what to trade. Right. So Or buy. So one of the things, you may come in with ideas from your network or the things that you do for a living, but, but often people actually go on to the site and use it to prospect for new ideas. They could use chat on the site to talk to other E-Trade investors, look at the news, all of the research. There are lots of different sources of investment ideas, as well as a lot of different ways to track your portfolio and the things you want to watch over time. Okay, so once I've done, I've opened up my account, I've now checked out the site, I've been getting some information, now I've picked a stock, let's say for example I want to buy Microsoft stock. Right. Now what do I do? Okay, so you click, there's a little button called trade, it's all very intuitive, and you enter a screen and you simply type in 100 shares of Microsoft instead of a little, you know, graphical screen, and then you hit trade and you will have a preview screen that will come up to allow you to actually confirm your order. You always get a second chance to make sure, Oops. yes, it is Microsoft, <laughs> it is 100 shares, it is at market or whatever, whatever method you're using. And then you hit trade and it goes off to the market and you own 100 shares of Microsoft. Boom, it's done, just like that. Now the big thing is, is that for, for, for people who have not done it before, even using a broker, there's a significant cost savings doing it online. I mean, what's, what's the price difference between using a broker versus going online? There's a tremendous cost savings. It can cost $300 or more to make a trade through a full commission broker. And online with E-Trade, it's between $15 and $20. That's a huge so it's very, it's very inexpensive. So it's almost like the commission isn't an important part of the process anymore. You're really trying to make good decisions about what you want to invest in. And the commission becomes a very insignificant part of the cost of doing that. So that's a really significant shift, though. I mean, now the, the responsibility now falls on you when you're doing you managing your own financial portfolios. Right. You really have to know what you're doing. You you have to you have to know what you're doing. You have to be careful. I mean, many people already are using discount brokers and are very comfortable making their own investment decisions. And that's what this is all about is empowering those people to do it with more information, more convenience and at lower cost and adding new sources of ideas. So for people who want to be self-directed, they actually get some help in coming up with new ideas as well. So the, the one thing when I think about trading online and I think about all of these, you know, the new online trading companies, I mean, E-Trade is now facing huge amounts of competition with lots of these new online brokering houses. How are you managing to keep up or, or you know, what are you doing to push the envelope? Mm -hmm. Well, there are a number of things. There are actually a number of basic things that are really important to people, like having access to customer service, having a high degree of reliability, having a site that performs really well, really fast. And securely, it seems to me. And very high level of security. So all of those are the basics. And then on top of that, we're adding a whole wealth of resources so that you have lots of different kinds of information to use to help you research and facilities like community areas where you can chat with other investors. Share and exchange share ideas. Share and exchange ideas. Even getting access to institutional quality research, which is very new to the retail investor. Getting access to IPOs, which retail investors have never had access to in the past. So all of that in one, in one really place. easy to use place. And we're here with Larry Maggot again, our syndicated columnist and all-around internet expert. Larry, we're talking about investing online here. And I was just speaking to Jill from Silicon Investor, and I said, what about, you know, possible bad information online? She said, well, on their site, somebody else will come along and straighten it out. All sites are not like that. And I've had somebody tell me that there is, in fact, malicious misinformation with regard to investments online because you can make money telling people to do the wrong thing. The thing about going online, you know, you look at a newspaper, you watch a TV show, you're going to talk to an expert at least has some credibility. Somebody hired him to be there. You're on a website, you have no idea who these people are. Yeah. You have no idea who's on a news group go to areas where you trust, whether it's a brand name or a site that a friend recommends and you truly have information, but be very careful. As you point out, you can get misinformation because it's just dumb yeah. or even worse because it's maliciously planted. So this Absolutely. is big time caveat emptor when it comes yeah. to this. Oh, yeah. Now let's talk about this whole notion of trading online. We talked some time ago about gambling online and you said, oh, dangerous, terrible things, stay away from it. 
What's the difference here? I mean, a guy with a click of a mouse can load a couple of thousand bucks into who knows what. It's that impulse buy you have to worry about. You know, you hear about a stock tip and say, that sounds good. Click, 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 send. Your you, money's you out did, the door. You did it once, right? I did it. I've done it a couple of <laughs> times. No disasters, but uh, maybe if I'd put some more thought into it, it would have been a more prudent investment. But you don't really have that intermediation process where you have to right. think about it. If you call a broker, go down, write a letter, do yeah, it. It's like email versus sending a letter. You yeah, don't have that exactly. extra time. So watch those impulses. You can get in trouble. All right. Thank you, Larry. My pleasure. For URLs of today's featured websites, just go to the Net Cafe site at cmptv.com. So Julie O'Brien, you're from Microsoft and Microsoft Money 99. Yes. Okay, the web has become a big thing. Finance, investing is big on the web. There's also software involved to help you do that. I'm a guy who needs help, okay? I'm a okay. complete neophyte when it comes to uh, managing my finances in any real systematic way. How can Microsoft Money help me? Help you out. Help me, please. <laughs> well, money is designed to actually let you manage your finances today and also start planning for the future. Okay. So things such as retirement, okay. buying a new home. Scary stuff. Scary Having stuff. Having kids, yes. that kind of, yes. Um, so it's everything from setting up an electronic checkbook, paying mm -hmm. your bills, doing online banking, and then also managing your portfolio and then starting to figure out how do I actually pay for college? How mm -hmm. do I actually buy that new house? So I actually pull all that information together for you so you can see your full financial picture. Okay. And this helps you make smarter financial Which decisions. Which is good. I actually just bought a house, okay? So what you're saying is I need to sit down with this software for a little while and enter in some key information. Mm -hmm. And now how does that stuff get updated? Do I have to do it? you know, over time, is the web involved in that? Well, you actually spend a little bit of time telling us about what you want, but mm -hmm. a big goal is to make sure that you don't have to spend too much time entering right. data. So a lot of the information we actually update automatically for you using the web. Really? So, for example, we'll automatically update mortgage rates. Okay. And let's say, for example, we find out that the mortgage rate you told us, mm -hmm. now mortgage rates are lower than your rate, we'll actually uh, prompt you and say, wait a second, you might want to consider refinancing. Yeah, I'm hoping that's yeah, going to happen. Yeah, he's like, come okay, on, please. Right, yeah. Um, but a big goal is to then bring a lot of that information right to you um, so it's useful and you get it immediately. Okay, so now online banking is big, uh, online bill paying is big. Yep. Is there a way to like pull in those kind of hooks as well? Yep. We actually allow you to connect to over 500 different financial institutions. So mm -hmm. it's your bank, it's your brokerage, it's your credit card, and actually pull in information such as a bank statement. So instead of entering the transactions, you can actually go online, dial up, bring the statement into your money file and have it automatically inputted. Okay. And then again, that information is wrapped together and right. pulled together and sort of show, shows you sort of your long term. That's great. I may never have to finances. balance my, my yes. checkbook again, it yes. sounds like. Okay, now what about online investing or, or just investing in general? Stock market investing. How can I bring that in? Uh, you know, keep, can I keep track of my portfolio? Mm -hmm. With money, you can actually track your investments mm -hmm. automatically, uh, whether it's your 401k or your mm -hmm. IRA, your Roth IRA, mm -hmm. etc. Pull that information in. We actually give you free online quotes, free news alerts information. We let you research stocks and mutual fine funds online about mm -hmm. a database of 16,000 different stocks and mutual funds. And then we actually do a lot of this stuff automatically again. You can hit one button to update mm -hmm. your internet information and we'll totally go through and update all of your portfolio and then link it to what you want to do long term. So if the stock goes up today, you'll know automatically what it means for your long term plan. Okay, so it sounds like you're helping people make, you know, good educated guess based on sound advice. You're not saying here's the stock you should buy, here's the tip of the day, that, that kind of thing. No, I mean, our goal is to be objective and sort of say, here's your finances, here's where you are, here's mm -hmm. some areas where you're missing information, let's fill that in, let's mm -hmm. pull in web content that's relevant to your situation. But we take you to the point where we actually link you out to relevant sites so you can go and do the shopping, right. actually do insurance or mortgage shopping, or get more information from experts. Right. But again, our goal is to kind of stop and be just sort of the objective advisor. Make it easy. Okay, now it sounds like the web is providing a lot of the functionality huh? uh, that this, this program and, and sort of bringing it together. So it sounds like pretty soon you may not need this software anymore. Is, is the web going to do it all or, or where well, are we going? There's tons of great information, free information on the web, for mm -hmm. especially for investors right. who are interested in pulling information. And one of the nice things about using products like Money 99 is you can take that investing information and then actually combine it with what you're doing in terms of saving, mm -hmm. combine it with your new home mortgage, right, right? Right. combine it with what you want to do long term, that vacation, those kids you're planning on mm -hmm. having, mm -hmm. and actually pull the whole picture together and see if you can actually reach those long term goals. Okay. Well, so, it sounds like a good glue because I need something to kind of tie it all together. I got too many papers strewn all over. So thanks, Julie. For URLs of today's featured websites, just go to the Net Cafe site at cmptv.com. So Terrence, we're talking about online investing. You've got a great website. It's called JustQuotes.com. What's the principle behind JustQuotes? Uh, JustQuotes.com is primarily research. Uh, we introduced this, this concept called the research start page. Um, investors go there. Uh, they do their research. Um, 
and stop the fun. So we offer a whole host of categories, the quotes, the charts, the earnings, um, shareholder information, annual reports. I mean, you name it, we have it. So basically what I would do is I'd come to JustQuotes.com and I'd know, for example, that I want to do some research on IBM. And so I would type in IBM and, and then the whole world opens up to me. Is that, is that basically well, how it works? I won't say the whole world, but <laughs> <laughs> close to that. Um, basically, you will have this research five page on IBM. Uh, so for instance, you want to check out what the price is first time. Uh, you click on the quote, get the price. Now you want to move on and say, okay, what has been the price historically? So you click on a chart uh, and see what has been the one year range. Um, so figure I can out, see the trending. Exactly, to figure out, you know, is it high, is it too high for me, is it too low for me? Um, and then maybe after that you go into, into earnings um, and look at the historical earnings. Uh, what is the consensus earnings coming up? Um, and maybe furthermore, you want to get some annual reports. Uh, go to some SEC filings, maybe uh, call IBM directly um, and get their annual report. Um, and then once you get in this information, you can go back and say, okay, now I have all of this information. I really want to get into the charts. So you, you can go to my chart, chart section. Uh, we have this thing called Chart Center. Click on there, and we have every type of conceivable chart. Um, you can get basic charts, basic charts with moving averages. So if the person wants to get into more technical analysis, they can, they can use stochastics, um, some oscillators, and you know, some of the more uh, technical uh, charts that they want to get into. But we offer all of that, um, and it's sort of one convenient page. Also, we offer this thing called News Bureau. News uh, Bureau? Right. It's actually a really cool concept. Um, it's not um, really a cool concept per se in terms of, I mean, it's, it's been, basically what it is, is it aggregates data into one page, um, all the different types of news. Uh, right now, you get PR Newswire and, and um, uh, Business Wire and Reuters. Uh, and most, most investors have heard of those. Um, but we also offer this, this thing called Transient Search. Um, it essentially searches 1,200 different business journals um, and puts it all to you on one page. Uh, so you can get um, reports from uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, USA Today, Philadelphia Inquirer. So, so these are all information on you know, any, any of the stories, hot stories that's going on in the financial markets today. Exactly. It's not just about one specific company that you're investing, it, it, investigating. It's, it's really the whole game. Well, you, uh, you, you can get both. I mean, uh, most of them are uh, company-based. Uh, so it'll be searched via the company sticker symbol um, uh, and out comes all the different information. But you can also get the more general news. So this uh, is great for a first time investor because they can just sort of scan and have a look at all of the different things that are going on and then start really developing some skills. Because I know there's a big growth in the number of online trading websites and lots of information about it, but it can be pretty overwhelming to somebody who's, who's not familiar to it. So it's, it's actually funny you say that because uh, beforehand uh, financial information was so inaccessible. I mean. Um, you know, getting a call, you have to be a, some sort of professional, you know. Uh, but with the, uh, it, um, it, uh, the whole internet coming along, um, information is now readily accessible. Uh, but the opposite is happening. There's too much information. It's overwhelming, um, there's, yeah. there's too much noise. Um, and uh, first time investors um, have a hard time and they sometimes get turned off because they just don't know what to do. Again, um, just close.com presents this concept called Research Start Page that allows them to uh, browse. Uh, and say, okay, this is the stuff that I want first, and I can go back and direct my research from this from this, uh, from this page. There's lots of stuff at JustQuotes.com. Thanks so much, Karen. We've all learned a little bit about online investing. Did you learn enough to uh, want to stick your toe in the water there and do it? I think stick my toe. you got to remember, I'm coming at this from sort of a, a newbie perspective. Right. It still seems kind of overwhelming. The, Too much information. The, the street.com, there must be 40 <laughs> stories a day coming out of there. You know, you really have to keep it's up It's a full-time job, Microsoft right? Microsoft Money, you have to enter a lot of information into there. Once you get it in there, it looks like it's great stuff. But for the, for the newbie, I'm still going to see if my girlfriend can <laughs> get in there and start it out for me. Jane? I still think it's for a very specific segment of the population. The people who really are already doing it? They're already doing it. They're risk takers by nature. And it is gambling. I mean, you, you say I've got a certain amount of money and I'm yeah. prepared to let it all go away well, or I, double my money. I do worry about people who, you know, a click and your money's spent. You know, I mean, it, it is a kind of dangerous thing in a way. We talk about gambling being so bad. But uh, I think the kind of site I looked at, uh, Jill told me about the tech stock site, which is really good because there you talk to your peers. You're not counting on somebody's expert advice. Just a bunch of guys sitting around or people sitting around mm -hmm. talking about, was that a good thing to buy? Was that a bad thing to buy? What was your experience with that particular trade or that particular industry? I think that's a market of information, which is kind of useful. Uh, so I might give it a shot. I don't know. Let me know if you make any money. <laughs> that's it for a look at online investing. That's it at Cybersmith this week. We'll see you here next time.
The Net Cafe is made possible in part by TechWeb. For up to the minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll free 1 888 310 7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.